This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you our HP Z440 workstation that we upgraded and optimized for gaming. Um, in the description of this video, we are going to post a link to our Z440 blog page. And this page will be very helpful to you because it shows you all of the hardware upgrades that we've done in this video and more. Um, so if you have an HP Z440 workstation, you'd like to upgrade it or optimize it for gaming, check this page out. Uh, we show you everything from processor upgrades all the way to peripherals, chairs, all that good stuff. So check this page out. It'll be very, very helpful to you. Also, we do free monthly giveaways on our Facebook page. Um, you can easily find our Facebook page by clicking this link on the top right corner. Um, all you have to do is like our Facebook page and you will qualify for our free monthly giveaways. Um, so let's get to our actual system. Uh, we're going to show you our specs first. Uh, we have an HP Z440 workstation. Uh, we have a Xeon 6 core E5 2643V3 3.4 gigahertz processor. Um, runs 3.7 max turbo frequency. We have 32 gig of RAM. Uh, it's DDR4 memory. Uh, we have installed a Samsung Evo 970 500 gig NVMe.2 solid state drive uh, with a PCI adapter. We're going to show you how we installed that in this video. Um, we also have an EVGA NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti graphics card that we're also going to show you how to install. We have the optional GPU fan that you'll, that you'll want to have installed if you go with a high-end GPU like we are. Um, a gigabit network port on board. 700 watt power supply, which is optional um, for, the, for the Z440. Um, so you'll want to you know, check that out uh, before you do any of these big upgrades. And then we are running Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. All right, so those are the specs that we have for our gaming PC. Uh, now keep watching the video because we're going to show you some benchmarks and some other cool things um, as we go on. So here's the front of the chassis. All right, we have four USB ports on the front of the chassis, which is awesome for VR if you're into VR. Um, we've got a audio port as well as a mic port if you want to plug your headset into the front ports for easy access. Um, we have our optical drive, and then there's a nice handle here if you ever need to lift the system, if you ever transport it. Um, here's the back of the chassis. So we've got a bunch of I.O. slots. Um, we're going to look a little bit closer to at the connections. Uh, two more audio ports, uh, gigabit network port, four more USB 3.0 ports, two more USB 2.0 ports, and then some PS2 ports. Um, here's a look at our power supply. And then we've got another handle in the back, so it's easy to lift this thing if you ever need to transport it. All right, so we're going to take a look inside the chassis. Pretty easy to remove this side panel. All right, here's a closer look inside. We've got room for three and a quarter in, or three and a half inch drives, uh, but we are just going to use our NVMe.2 solid state drive as our boot device. All right, so here's our I/O slots. Uh, we got two PCIe X16 slots. We've got a PCIe X8, a PCIe X4, PCIe X1, and then we have an old PCI slot as well if you have legacy cards. All right, so this is how you check what wattage power supply you have. Um, as you can see, the little sticker here, it says 700 watt. Um, there's another 500 watt option, but you, know, you, you definitely want the 700 watt if you plan to go with the high-end graphics card like we are. All right, so we're going to remove the fan shroud that covers the CPU and the memory just so you can get a closer look at the memory and proc. And that comes off uh, fairly easily. The, the one part that sticks a little bit is where that fan connection is on the motherboard at the top left there. All right, so we have eight memory slots, and this is a single socket CPU system. So uh, right now we have four 8-gig modules in, in the system, as you can see, and then we have room for four more modules if we ever needed to upgrade. All right, so here's our I.O. slots. We're going to remove the retention clip that actually locks those PCI brackets into place uh, because we are going to actually install our NVMe.2 solid state drive. All right, so we have to put this card into an adapter because there is not an NVMe.2 solid state drive slot on the system board. But this card is, this card is super fast. If you've never used NVMe.2 drives, you'll definitely want to get one of these if you have a Z440. They're like three to six times faster than a conventional SATA solid state drive. All right, so we're going to install that in the, in the lower PCIe X16 slot uh, for maximum throughput. Um, and because that slot's open, it gives a little bit of space in between the graphics card 
and the NVMe.2 solid state drive. All right, so here the here's a benchmark that we ran on this NVMe.2 solid state drive. Now the speeds on this change, and we found that they change depending on how much storage we actually have on the drive. Um, the age of the drive actually will will probably make a difference too. We don't know quite sure. Uh, we this drive is still fairly new. Uh, it's got less than a thousand power on hours. So um, the max speed uh, for uh, writes is twenty three hundred, and max for um, read is thirty four hundred. Um, so we were averaging about a thousand under that, a little less than that for writes, which is actually pretty good. Still way faster than a conventional uh, SATA solid state drive. So if you've never, uh, if you don't have a, a, an NVMe.2 drive installed, um, you should definitely consider um, installing one because they're crazy fast. If you have big programs or games, um, you'll want to definitely consider it. All right, so we we found that the 700 watt power supply chassis, if you, if you purchased your Z440 stock with that, you should have the optional GPU cooling fan that, that uh, HP will recommend for high-end graphics cards. Um, we would consider the 1080 Ti a high-end graphics card. So if you, if you plan to install a high-end graphics card and you're going to upgrade your power supply to the 700 watt, definitely locate this fan, this J9P80AA. Uh, we'll also post this on GreenPCGamers.com, but definitely locate this fan and install it when you install the power supply. Uh, now we put question mark because we're not 100% sure if that fan is standard on the 700 watt unit, uh, but we've had a few different 700 watt Z440 chassis in our possession and they've all had the upgraded cooling fan for the GPU. So here's what that fan looks like. It's mounted right in the front of the chassis. It blows right over those IO slots. So this is a closer look at the fan. Um, so you can check and see if you already have it. If you already have it, great. If not, it's something you want to consider buying to keep your GPU nice and cool. All right, so check the specs uh, through your manufacturer on your graphics card before you upgrade. Um, so the EVGA uh, GTX 1080 Ti SE2 card that we are going to install, we check the specs. The manufacturer recommends a 600 or more watt power, uh, power supply. And we obviously have a 700 watt, so we're just we're just over that. Um, obviously, the more the better, um, because that will help with you know issues. You know, if you're getting into some really high end gaming or editing or whatever, um, it'll 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 make it way easier on that uh, on that power supply. The more wattage that you have. All right, so here's our graphics card. We do need two auxiliary power. To plug into this we need a six pin and an eight pin and we've got our connections so this will change depending on what graphics card you install all right so we're going to install the actual card now this card's pretty heavy so all you have to do is line it up with the slot make sure you've removed the pci brackets and we definitely want to use a 75 watt slot like we're using all right so we've got that card installed we're going to put our retention clip back on because um, we're done installing I.O. cards. All right, so we're going to show you two different options for power adapters. Um, the first option is the one that we prefer um, because um, it provides a little bit more power to the graphics card. Um, now, we've gone with the second option. We're just going to tell you we've, we've done the second option, and we had some intermittent shutdowns uh, that were caused by lack of power when we were playing certain games. Um, so... Um, this is the recommended option that we have, um, but if you if you have um, um, if you have three and a half inch hard drives installed, you're not going to be able to do this. I'll just tell you straight up. Um, so you're going to have to go with the option two. All right, so we're going to do two times six pin female to one times eight pin male, and then two times SATA power to six pin male. So we're going to show you how we do that. Here's our two adapters, our dual SATA power to six pin male. And then we've got our 8-pin male and then two 6-pin female connections. All right, so we'll actually show you how to connect these. Now, first, we're going to plug in our SATA power. Now, as I said, if you have 3.5-inch drives installed into those slots, like if you're not using NVMe like we are, you, you probably can't go with this option unless you swap to an NVMe. 
but this option will give you a little bit more stability based off of testing that we've done. Uh, if you don't run high-end games, you know, don't worry about it. Go with option two. All right, so we plugged uh, th that in, and we've we've got the six pin already plugged into the GPU. And now we're going to find the two six pin cables that are off of the power supply harness because we have the 700 watt power supply. And we're going to connect those to the six pin female connections. And then that's going to give us our eight pin power. And we'll go ahead and plug that into our GPU. So that's option one. That's the option we like. But we understand that you know a lot of you are probably going to have three and a half inch drives in these in these uh, uh, hard drive slots. So you may not be able to do that because you already have data. All right. So here's option two. One. This is using a one time six pin female to eight pin male adapter. So this is what that adapter looks like. Pretty simple, straightforward adapter. And we're just going to plug that adapter in to one of the six pin ports. And then that's going to accommodate our eight pin that, that we require. And then we already have the other six pin available. So this, again, this option should, I mean, be, be okay for you unless you get into some really high end gaming. Um, again, we've had some intermittent shutdowns uh, during some pretty intense gameplay, which is kind of a pain, but you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what adapter, uh, do what adapters work for your uh, current setup. That's we. That's why we provide both options. All right. So if you're curious, these are the frames that we were getting during a benchmark. Um, so under 720 resolution, we we were averaging 254 frames per second. Um, 1080, uh, we were averaging 166 frames per second, and 1440, we were averaging 112 frames per second. So pretty pretty good for uh, this card. You know, this is. It's going to average over 100 FPS, you know, you know, for whatever settings you use, unless you do 4K, then you'll see, um, you'll see lower frame rates, obviously. All right, we're going to put our fan baffle back on. All right, so this is really important. If you install a big graphics card like we did, you are going to have to remove this handle off the side panel. It's actually not really a handle. It's a, um, it's to lock the GPU into place. But what happens is if you leave this on, it hits the power supply and it doesn't the side panel doesn't shut flush. So use a T15, remove it like we just did, and then you're going to be able to put your side panel on really, really easily. So that's very, very important. All right, here's the, a look at the back of the chassis now uh, with our graphics card installed and our NVMe drive installed. So it looks pretty slick, especially for a Z440 workstation. Um, here's a look at the F10 setup. We're just going to show you quickly uh, the processor that's installed, and then we're going to go to the advanced view and check out the the memory as well. So we've got our E5 V3 processor and four Samsung 8 gig modules installed. All right, so that's that's what that looks like, and then we are going to move on. And we are going to show you how to install the latest video card driver for, um, we're going to pick NVIDIA because obviously we installed the NVIDIA card. Uh, so we're going to go to NVIDIA.com and we're going to go and locate the latest driver so we get max frames. So you're going to want to do this if you install a new graphics card into your Z440. Um, if you install an ATI card, obviously go to that uh, the correct site and pick out the correct driver. Um, so we're going to go ahead and find it. You can auto-detect or you can find it manually. Uh, we're going to find the driver manually and get the latest driver and obviously install it. Now there's another feature that you can download with the driver. It's called the GeForce Experience. Uh, definitely recommend it. Um, it'll help you optimize games if you don't like to optimize them on your own. All right, so now we've loaded into Windows 10. We've got our driver installed. We're going to go and check out the device manager. I'm going to show you our... 970 NVMe, our graphics card driver, or not driver, but the, just the graphics card to display adapter. And then here's our 12 threads. It's actually a six core CPU, but it shows up as 12 threads in Windows 10. And this is our system management. So you can see that uh, 32 gig of RAM, 
and we've got our six core CPU that's showing up. All right, so that was our gaming build. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. Check out our Discord page. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to contact us. Uh, we're happy to try and help you. Thank you so much for watching.